Thank you, Brent, for sitting down with me. Thanks, Mark, for having me. Yeah, we are here in Saskatoon for the CSGA Interprovincial Meeting. And you are here, of course, representing Cantera Seeds, of which you are now CEO. Congratulations. Thanks, Mark. Recently took over for, for David Hansen. And as you, as you step into this new role, what's, what's your number one priority and why? Well, there's, a, there's certainly a few priorities, but it, you know, a short list will be, you know, making sure that our staff sees uh, continuity to the business. We've had a lot of uh, really nice success and growth in the last while, and we've got a great team. So I want to make sure that our, our staff feel supported through this transition. It can be a little bit unnerving anytime you have change of leadership. And I think thankfully for both myself and, and for the team, um, we're quite familiar to each other, let's say. Um, but I just want to make sure I don't take anything for granted during this period of transition. And uh, also importantly is uh, the relationships that, that Dave had and has with so many of our partners and suppliers and shareholders and board and so on. I want to make sure that the relationship transition occurs. And so uh, we'll be spending a total of about three months working through that period of, of transition. And then uh, finally, um, we recently um, approved a, a long-term strategic plan. So making sure that the strategy and direction of the business uh, remains a priority for myself and for the team. What's the biggest challenge, you know, taking over a CEO? I mean, it's not an easy role. There's a lot of traveling, uh, networking, you know, like well, here this week in Saskatoon. And I mean, it's a hard job being a CEO. It's no simple task. What for you is, is yeah, the biggest Biggest challenge, and how do you how do you deal with that? Yeah, so certainly travel will be and um, will take up more of my time, um, and you know maybe over time it'll it'll ease into a little bit more of a, a standard routine of sorts. Thankfully, I'm going into this role knowing the industry, knowing the stakeholders, so I don't have uh, as much of a, a learning curve in those areas. Um, you know, the other part of it for me is that my career has been really focused on operations and execution at a at a very detailed level. And so now to elevate my view and perspective with longer term vision and strategy, um, we'll just take some getting used to. I've certainly uh, am preparing myself and have prepared myself for that change in mindset and and really just entrusting that the staff are going to be able to execute all the operations that are needed for the business. You j literally just like, I don't know, half an hour ago finished a panel discussion, like a two hour panel discussion on VUA variety use agreement, funding for plant breeding. So I, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to repeat some of those points all over again. But uh, in terms of the VUA, uh, I believe uh, Kenter sees, well, you have the partnership with Lima Grain to form Lima Grain Cereals Research Canada. And I believe that the two wheat varieties that LCRC has in the VUA, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, were the first two wheat varieties right. to have a VUA on them. Yes. And what value do you see for the VUA in in the future? You know, we keep talking about it at every meeting now mm -hmm. as a topic. So it's it's getting legs. It's starting to get more acceptance. We're talking about it more. Yeah. That's a good thing. But but what do we need to really really bring that over the top and, and really make the VUA a, a reality in this country? So, yeah, so it is, it's a valuable tool in my mind to help create an environment that will uh, attract and maintain investment in variety development and in a broader sense. So public breeding programs, private breeding programs, large and small, I think can all utilize this mechanism of royalty collection to help sustain variety development. And at, at, the, at, at the top level, that's really what you know, I see as the great opportunity for Western Canadian agriculture or Canadian agriculture is to sustain investment in variety development. And I think that the uh, outcome of that really is beneficial to the seed industry first because they are the first stage in introduction of those varieties into the marketplace and ultimately the farmer is the biggest benefactor with new and improved varieties. So, um, you know, I, I think the time in my mind anyway, the time of what royalty collection model would be most efficient in my mind is sort of in the rear view mirror. Um, and now it's about execution and, uh, and getting additional buy in. And I think that as new and improved varieties come to market, farmers will see value 
in those varieties and new varieties will be adopted more readily because of it. So farmers uh, make sound business decisions in their businesses, uh, regardless if it's equipment or agronomy practices, fertilizer use and seed is just part of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's still, you know, a little bit, anytime you talk about new funding models, there's always still a little bit of controversy, people who aren't quite sure about it. And there was a comment made at the panel that, well, this might just be, you know, VUA is just a private sector uh, strategy to just get money. And, you know, well, maybe you'll invest five, 10 percent of it, but then the rest goes back to, to the company kind of a thing. What, what, what's your response to that when, when, you, when you hear that, when someone says, well, the VUA is just a way for, you know, the private sector to make money how do you how do you generally counter that well first of all plant breeding is a long-term investment so you know from the time of first cross uh, that a breeder makes to having a final finished variety ready for a commercial farmer to access it is you know 10 to 12 years at least right so think about the uh, money that's required to invest over that period of time before you even get the first dollar of of revenue from it it's um, plus you also have the the breeding funnel if you will where you need to make literally thousands of crosses to potentially get one or two varieties out of it so you know the commitment that it takes um, from a variety development perspective to help them get there it, it you know I think too much uh, at times some uh, you know too much attention is being paid on well where's all the money gonna come from I mean what a great problem we would have um, where we would see huge dollars coming in for investment. And, you know, we've seen it in other countries around the world where these more comprehensive royalty collection models are well established that uh, those companies do invest, in fact. So I think there has to be a little bit more trust in the system that, um, that the dollars will end up where they need to go. Yeah, it's definitely a good news story and something that, like I say, the fact we keep talking about it is a good thing. People aren't forgetting about it. And so I think the more we talk about it, the more legs it's going to get. And change doesn't happen overnight. But right. I don't have to tell you that as somebody who's just, you know, taken on this new CEO role. I know something you've you've worked for years to make a name for yourself in this industry. And, and before I let you go, and, and yeah, as 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 CEO now, what sort of, uh, we're almost at 2024. It's, what, November 15th yeah. today? What are you... What are you most excited about in the new year when it comes to, to Cantera Seeds? Well, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about uh, different areas of our business, seeing growth. Um, you know, our canola seed business is, is moving along at a really nice pace. We're only a couple months into our selling season and we're seeing some, some nice uh, some growth there. And uh, the fact that, you know, like we talked about, just investment in variety development. Well, we partnered with Lima Green in, in 2015. First field season was 2016. And what I'm really excited about is like the variety registration meetings coming up in February. You know, that's just a couple months away from now. And and we're actually going to see, I think, some of the very first true crosses that were made by the breeders at that time of establishment of the new variety be supported for registration. And, and my team and I can't wait to get uh, seed production underway and actually get some of those new and improved varieties to farmers because I think the proof will be in the field at the end of the day. Looking forward to it. We'll see you at PGDC. We'll see you at PGDC. Thanks, Brent. Thanks, Mark.